Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. So now let's proceed with our next subtopic, which is water. So what is water? So water is referred as a polar molecule because they have two ends with opposite partial charges. So as you can see in the diagram, so this is oxygen, so it's partially negative. So it is attracted to hydrogen, which is partially positive. So a uh, hydrogen molecule will form hydrogen bonds with another water molecule. So that means this hydrogen will be attracted to another oxygen from another water molecule. All right. Okay, so these are the hydrogen bonding of water molecules. So you can see how one uh, water molecule is attracted or they will form a four hydrogen bond with another four water molecules. All right. And then uh, the degree of hydrogen bond uh, depends on the state of the water itself, whether it's in a gas state, uh, liquid state, or in a solid state. All right. And then um, hydrogen bonds are formed or broken as water change from one form to another. Okay, let's look at the next one. So, so as water boils, so you can see here at 100 degrees Celsius, so as water boils, um, the hydrogen bonds between one water molecules with another water molecules will break and steam is formed, which con containing the uh, minuscule water droplets. And then during the liquid state, uh, water molecules continually will form and then they will form the hydrogen bond between water molecules with another water molecules and then they will turn to break, form break, form break in liquid state. However, in each uh, in uh, solid state, when the ice freeze, they will form a crystalline lattice structure. It means from one between one water molecules will, with another one water molecules, they will have a specific distance. So this is the crystalline lattice structure. All right. Okay. Next one. So properties of water. So there are seven properties of water. So the first one is high specific heat capacity. So water has high specific heat capacity. Water has high heat of vaporization. And water is a good solvent. Water has high density. Water is transparent. And then we are going to look at the reactivity of the water. And the last one is the cohesion behavior. All right, okay, next one. Okay, first, water has high specific heat capacity. What do you mean by high specific heat capacity? A large amount or uh, amount of heat energy required in order to raise one gram of water, uh, in order to increase one degree Celsius of one gram of water. All right, so water temperature is freely stable when air temperature change rapidly. So this, uh, one of the good example is our body temperature. So our body temperature, normally we'll maintain at 37 degrees Celsius as our body is mainly composed of water. So that is how our body temperature is maintained. All right. Um, and water also essential for the enzyme activities. So in, in order for the enzyme reaction to take place, uh, normally our body, which is 37 degrees Celsius, is the optimum temperature for enzymatic activities uh, due to that explains why our body is mainly composed of water. All right, aquatic organisms living in ocean and lakes. All right, the large bodies of water have relatively constant temperature. So, uh, although the the climate change or the season change, uh, the fish or uh, animals in uh, in ocean are still able to survive, since the ocean and lakes will not freeze during winter. All right, and then uh, it is also stabilize the temperature of the surface. All right, number two, high heat of vaporization. So what do you mean by uh, heat of vaporization? Amount of heat energy, a liquid uh, of one gram, need to absorb in order to be converted to gas. All right, so water has high heat of vaporization because it requires a lot of energy uh, to be absorbed to cause the water. So this Heat energy will cause water to move faster uh, 
all right, the molecules of the water to move faster and then the, it will break the hydrogen bond between water molecules and then later evaporate. Uh, the, uh, the water molecules will evaporate from the water body surface. So as the liquid evaporate, it, uh, it gives the cooling effect. All right, example is like during, uh, uh, after we exercise, we tend to sweat. So once our sweat, um, evaporate, change from liquid to gas, it will have one effect called evaporative cooling. So it, it helps to cool down our body. Another example is uh, panting and transpiration. Uh, so these are the examples of the evaporative cooling. Next one. So good solvent. So, so what is a solvent? Solvent is a dissolving agent of a solution. So water is a polar molecule, so it's a very good solvent. So large polar molecules such as protein can dissolve in water if they have ionic and polar region. So normally metabolic reaction will take place between substances in solution. So in order for the metabolic reaction to take place, so uh, they require water. Okay, so this are the uh, structure of the glucose, how glucose is surrounded by uh, water molecules. So this is how the hydration shell is formed. Okay. All right. okay, next, uh, properties of water. Water has high density, so the maximum density of water is at 40 degrees Celsius. Sorry. The maximum density of uh, water is at 4 degrees Celsius, and it expands upon freezing. So during when water freezes, more hydrogen bond will form a crystalline like this structure. So that means they will have specific distance between one water molecule with another one. So ice float on water and leave, uh, freeze at top to protect the organism below. So this, uh, the one that I mentioned before, the animals in the lakes and ocean can still continue to survive even during winter as ice only uh, ice floats on water. So water is a dense liquid that enables it to support organism by up trust it uh, exit. So this is referring to the buoyancy. As example, will they could not be supported, they could not support its body weight in air, so they, they are unable to survive uh, on land, so they must stay in the water uh, due to the buoyancy. Next one, okay, this one, this uh, diagram is actually to show the difference of the hydrogen bond when it is in liquid state and during uh, the solid state. So when it is in liquid state, you can see how the hydrogen uh, is formed and then break, form, break, form, break. However, when ice, uh, when water freeze, it become an ice, so they will form a crystalline lity structure. So that means from water molecules, one water molecules with another one, they will have a specific distance. All right, so basically they will form like a hexagonal crystal lity structure. Okay, so this is the difference between in water state and in solid state. Okay, so this one is another uh, example of diagram. You can see the difference of the hydrogen bond in water and also in ice. Okay, next uh, properties of water is the transparency. So as we know, water is transparent, so it helps the light source to penetrate through the water medium. So this is essential for photosynthesis to occur even in water. As example, the uh, algae, brown algae or phytoplankton. Okay, next is the reactivity of the water. So water can take part in the chemical reaction in body met metabolism. So in order for our body to undergo metabolism, they require the solvent, which is a water. So essential reaction in hydrolysis reaction and photosynthesis. So photosynthesis need water and same goes with the hydrolysis process. Okay. And then the last one is the cohesion. All right. So linking together of water molecules by the hydrogen bond. So cohesion helps to transport of water against gravity in plants. That explains how the water is transported from the root to the shoots of the plant. Okay, so water has an unusually high surface tension due to the hydrogen bond. So um, this helps the insect to float or 
even walk on the surface of the water. So this diagram is to show the adhesion and cohesion. So adhesion is actually the attraction between the water molecules and other substances like the wall of the, the plants, all right? And then uh, the cell wall of the plants, all right? And then uh, cohesion is the attraction between two water molecules, all right? So basically cohesion and adhesion helps the water to transport against gravity. So surface tension, what is surface tension? Measure of how hard it is to break uh, the surface of the liquid. All right, so this is one example how the rough spider are able to walk on the surface of the water. All right, so these are the sample question that you can try to answer on your own, right? This is the first one, right? Then this is the second one. And this is the last question. Till then, thank you. Bye-bye.